And one thing I've been hearing from a lot of people is that their company culture has naturally changed right now. Most companies weren't set up for the amount of remote work that we're doing. How are you encouraging leaders to keep the culture alive or to build a stronger culture right now when we aren't in a physical office? It's a great question. Uh, so right now, doing kind of uh, doing culture assessments or pseudo culture assessments, getting the pulse on where people are, getting ideas from all levels. Um, it, it's absolutely imperative. Um, and actually some of the more, more forward thinking companies right now, I've been working with a couple of very forward thinking companies to do culture assessments and, hmm. and really do like doing focus groups with all of their employees to see what's working, what's not, in this environment and and talk about and and in the past and talk about the things collectively that can be done going forward that is empowering people at all stages right now to get involved and to be involved in how the culture is going to evolve because it's not going to be the same it's like the grief i was talking about life is not going to be the same these company cultures are not going to be the same it can't it can't be and it shouldn't be right i think it is just so important to to ask, to talk, to, to do the focus groups, to do the assessments, to figure out a plan forward that is collective. Yeah. Collective input. No, so a couple words that you, you said in there and, and something we haven't touched on in this, but you and I have talked about in the past, you talked about collective and you talked about um, empowering and you talked about talking. How are you recommending, there is Zoom fatigue, there's call fatigue, especially for working parents, getting on video, getting on calls, all of it is exhausting and, and almost impossible right now. So how are you recommending that people do keep open lines of communication, recognizing that burnout around Zoom and, and other video calls? I mean, there's different ways. I, I think, um... I, I, I think these kind of conversations do have to have, have, have to happen as live as possible. So I do. Yeah. yeah. No, this is a, yeah, I agree. But I think giving people, I think giving people a heads up about what's being discussed and if they're being asked to contribute, giving them a heads up to think prior to the call is very important. So mm -hmm. being very mindful to give agendas and to give um, discussion points before. So people have some time to reflect and are not, because it, you know the, the ability to concentrate on a Zoom call is so limited. Um, so being able to put some thought into it and make the conversations as, 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 as pointed as possible is, is super helpful. Um, I think there's a problem with email. So I think what's happened because everyone is so burnt out on Zoom, our inboxes have exploded even more than they were exploded before. And I think that, yeah is a huge, huge issue. Or so, your Slack channels. <laughs> or, right, <laughs> Slack channels. There's just, it's just huge. So one of the things that, um, you know, again, culturally with organizations, this is not gonna change for every organization. One of the things that um, I've talked about with a lot of, a lot of organizations that I do work with is, is um, kind of setting rules around communication. Like what really does need to be communicated versus what do you think needs to be communicated? Huh. What's the okay. timing of stuff and being mindful and thoughtful about that and thoughtful about the replies back, you know, like, thanks, like the extra emails and like coming up with some rules around how we email, how we communicate and what we expect. Some of the larger companies, I think really cool are setting like no meeting Fridays mm. or, um, or kind of like, you know, we all collectively are going to take this week off or just have it as a down week to catch up. Mm -hmm. These are some of the bigger organizations, but I think using some of those strategies for some small organizations are, are super helpful and being super mindful of people's time and overwhelm. Yeah. Even if it's just like, okay, collectively we're taking this day off at the end of August, everyone's taking it off or you can use it to catch up, whatever it might be these kind of little things go a really long way. Yeah. I really like that idea about being more prepared into meetings because I think it, keeping them short is one of the best ways yep. to help everybody out with that. Yep. So very you know, like, meetings, like the over, the, the, the kind of meeting culture became a habit. It became yeah. something we thought we needed. Like we're all adults. We know how to work. Um, <laughs> we probably don't need as many meetings as we have. Yeah. No, I certainly, I would say certainly we don't. <laughs> awesome.